Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Liam Douglas here coming at you from Roxboro, North Carolina. And in today's video, I'm doing an unboxing review of the new Fujifilm XF 150 to 600 telephoto lens. But before we get into that, I wanted to remind you to check out the Liam Photography Podcast. You can find it anywhere the podcasts are served. And I have a massive back catalog of 339 episodes that you can go back and listen to. Now, for this Thursday's episode, I sit down with Dr. Larry Tiefenbrunn, owner, creator, and inventor of the Platypod ecosystem of photography accessories and we talk about his new platypod handle i'll put a link down in the description for the kickstarter campaign so you can get on over there and order yourself one of those extremely handy camera handles and vlogging handles it can be used for both and it's very sturdy very reliable and very handy all right so let's get into this video here we have this behemoth and let's go ahead and unbox it so we're going to open it up here. Now, I got this on loan from Fujifilm North America. Thank you again to Daniel Carpenter for being nice enough to hook me up with one of these on a loan basis so that I could do a review on it and take it out and test it a bit. So we have the lens here with its hood and the front and rear lens caps. It's got a tripod collar as well. It has switches here on the side for AF presets. It has a programmable button on the bottom. And then it also has a button for the auto and manual focus. And also one where you can limit the focus distance. Um, extremely handy. Now this lens is one of the Fujifilm RLM OIS WR lenses. Um, so the LM is the linear motor, which is the autofocusing system. OIS is the optical image stabilization. And WR means it's weather resistant. Now, also in the box, we have the owner's manual, which is pretty thick. <laughs> and we have a Fujifilm strap as well. Now, I've had this lens for about 10 days now. And it is a great lens. Uh, let me go ahead and give you the specifications on the lens, uh, just to give you a better idea. So the focal length, of course, is 150 to 600. And full frame 35 millimeter equivalent, that's 229 to 914 millimeters. So a tremendous amount of reach. Now, the maximum aperture is f5.6 to f8. Not the greatest, uh, but that's also why the lens is fairly small, um, although it is considerably larger than my 50 to 140 2.8. Uh, the minimum aperture is f22. It is, of course, Fujifilm X mount designed for APS-C cameras. The angle of view is 10.8 degrees to 2.7 degrees, depending on whether you're zoomed in or out. Maximum magnification is 0.24 times, and it contains 17 or 24 elements in 17 groups. So there's quite a few elements to make up this particular optical formula. The diaphragm blades are nine in a rounded setup. The, it is an autofocus lens, of course. It does have optical image stabilization. The tripod collar can be rotated or moved. And, of course, the tripod collar does have the notches here, the little loops, in order to put the Fujifilm strap on it if you want that to make it a little easier to carry this behemoth. Um, so the front filter size is 82 millimeters, which is pretty decent. Um, I always recommend if you're going to buy filters, ND filters, circular polarizing filters, always buy them at 100 millimeters or maybe a little bit bigger, and then get yourself a good set of quality step-up rings on Amazon. Step-up rings are fairly inexpensive, and that way, if you buy your filters larger than the front element of your biggest lens, then you have the flexibility with the step-up rings to use those filters with every lens you own. Now, you could optionally go to an 82 millimeter filter set um, if this is going to be your biggest lens, but you never know. I always recommend going to 100 or maybe even 110 or 12 millimeters, depending on what filters you buy, in case down the road you decide to buy another lens that's got a much bigger front element. There are some out there that are 87 and even 95 millimeters, believe it or not. Uh, so some pretty big front elements out there. Now the dimensions is 3.9 by 12.4 inches or 99 by 314.5 millimeters. 
and the weight is 3.5 pounds or 1,605 grams. Now, that is a substantial amount of weight. In comparison, the Canon RF 100 to 500, which doesn't quite reach as long as this, of course, is only three pounds by comparison, and that's a full frame lens. So this lens is a bit heavier than the Canon RF lens, um, and the Canon RF lens does have a wider maximum aperture of f7.1. So you would get one more stop of light in this. But this lens is a very great lens. It's well made, very good construction. We have the, let me get the uh, lens hood off here, twist that off. And of course we have our focusing ring here on the front and we have our zoom ring here on the back. Both are very smooth, work very nicely with no issues whatsoever. Now this lens does not have an aperture ring like a lot of Fuji's lenses do, so you have to control the aperture using one of your command dials on your actual camera body. Now speaking of body, I plan to pair this behemoth with one of my Fujifilm X-T4s, and I've got the battery grip on the X-T4, uh, so it makes the camera a little beefier and makes it a little bit easier to carry this big lens. Now, I will be honest with you, three and a half pounds doesn't sound like a lot. When I was younger, I shot professional motorsports and I used much heavier lenses that were six and eight pounds in some cases. But as I've gotten older and after years of lugging that heavy Canon gear, I have nerve issues in both my arms, so I can no longer hold even a lens at three and a half pounds as steady as I used to. So for me to shoot with this lens, I have to put it on a monopod so that I can try to get some steady shots. All right, I'm going to go ahead and include some sample images in here. I was trying to get some wildlife photos, but I haven't seen a whole lot of wildlife in our area yet, which is kind of funny since we live out in the boonies. Um, all we've had around our property lately is some small birds, and they're so flighty, they never sit still long enough to get a good photograph of them. But I will include some photos that I've taken with this lens just so you can see what the image performance is like. So let's go ahead and take a look at that slideshow now. Okay, so as you saw, I did get some really good images with this lens. Uh, like I said, I have to use my monopod just because it's such a heavy lens. And uh, with the nerve issues that I have in both my arms, I'm just not able to hold it completely steady anymore. But with this focal length, with this focal range, you could definitely get some amazing wildlife photographs. You know, get up close, you got some reach. 914 millimeters on 35 millimeter full frame equivalents. You're at almost a thousand millimeters with the crop body with the 1.5 times crop. So you can get some serious reach with this beautiful lens. Now the lens sells for $1,999. You can find it at B&H, Adorama, Amazon, Focus Camera, Moment, probably just about anywhere uh, in the US. And I'm sure it's available at most any camera stores worldwide as well. It's been out for a little while now. Um, this is a really good lens. I don't think I'm going to add this one to my kit anytime in the near future, uh, only because it's a little bit too heavy for me. And um, 
I don't like the fact that the maximum aperture is f8. Uh, generally, if I buy a telephoto lens, a, a super telephoto lens, I want my maximum aperture to be about 6.3 if at all possible. Now, Canon does have their low cost uh, te super telephoto lenses. They're 600 millimeter and 800 millimeters, but those are both at F11. However, from all the reviews I saw, you can get amazing images with those lenses, even though their maximum aperture is F11, because of the fact that the RF mirrorless cameras have such fantastic uh, low noise performance at higher ISOs. And the Fuji cameras are the same. Yes, you could absolutely use this um, on the newer Fuji mirrorless cameras without too much trouble. Uh, most all the newer Fuji cameras are capable of fairly high ISOs before things go really bad. You can usually get away with 6,400 or maybe even 12,800 before you're going to start getting too much noise to get good clean images. Um, with any of the Fuji mirrorless cameras. Now, on the new X-T5 and the X-H2, with their 40 megapixel sensor, I can imagine you could get some absolutely stellar images with this particular lens. It is designed to be used with those bodies as well. So, Fuji always thinks ahead, and we do always appreciate that from the good folks at Fujifilm. All right, that's going to wrap up this video. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, like the videos, watch them, comment on them, share them out on social media. Feel free in the comments to leave me your opinion on this lens. Is it a lens you're going to add to your kit or are you going to bypass it for the time being? Or maybe you just don't need a super telephoto lens. Each and every one of us has different needs. All right, thank you again for your time and I will see you in the next video.